If you're a web developer, having a blog is a great way to build up your online presence as well as have something to show potential employers. You can use it to showcase your portfolio projects, share your technical knowledge, or even record your own journey learning to code. Now, if you want to build your own blog, what tools should you use? There are lots of options out there, but the one that I use myself is WordPress. Now, I know WordPress has a reputation for being slow and insecure, and that can definitely be true, but my website that I built with WordPress is pretty fast according to Google's PageSpeed Insights. Instead of using a page builder and lots of plugins, which can cause bloat and security issues, I built my website from scratch with just two plugins. So if you want to learn how to build a fast and minimal WordPress blog from scratch, in this video, I'll show you every part of my process from how to set up a local WordPress environment, build a custom theme from scratch, and migrate the website from local to the production site on SiteGround web hosting. This video is sponsored by SiteGround, who I highly recommend, and I've been using them to host my own website for the past seven years and counting. Sound good? Let's get into it. Now, the first thing you're going to want to do is to set up a local WordPress environment. This will enable you to build everything locally, fix any bugs, and get everything ready before actually deploying to your production environment. Now, the best way that I've found to do this is to use local WP, which is a tool that you can use for free. It's very quick to install, and it's just a lot more convenient than manually setting up your own MySQL database and WordPress install. So you can create a new local WordPress site with one click and you can install and manage multiple sites right from the dashboard. So let's check out our WordPress admin, log in, and here's our new WordPress site. Now let's install some plugins, starting with the classic editor plugin so that we can use the good old classic editor and advanced custom fields, which you'll need to download from the website directly and then add by uploading to WordPress. Now to build my custom theme, I like using the blank slate theme as a starter theme because it's very bare bones. Now let's open our WordPress site files in VS code from local, and we can then navigate to the blank slate theme. So one thing that I do recommend is to install the VS code extension called PHP IntelliFence. This is so that you can use it and prettify your PHP code, which is going to make working with these WordPress files just a lot easier on yourself. Now in our files, I'm going to rename the blank slate theme so that the folder is now called coder blog. And then I'm going to run a find and replace on this folder for all files so that any instance of blank slate will be renamed to coder blog. Now, if we go into our WordPress admin, we now have a theme called coder blog, which we can activate. And here's our starter site, which you can see is very minimal. Next, we're going to make a custom homepage. To do that, I'm going to create a new page and call it homepage. Then we're going to customize our settings. And for homepage, I'm going to set it to load a static page and then select that new page that we just created. So we're going to create a custom PHP template for our homepage. But in order to do that, I need to get the slug, which is the unique identifier of this page. We can get this from the quick edit panel and we can see it's called homepage. So now in our theme files, I'm going to copy the page.php file, paste it so that we have a copy, and then rename the new one to page-homepage.php using that slug name homepage so that WordPress will use this file to load our custom homepage. Now let's clean this file up and remove some of the existing WordPress code that we don't need. I'm also going to clean up the header and footer PHP files. The header PHP file will load at the top of every page on WordPress, and the footer PHP file will load at the very bottom. Now when we reload our site, all that extra stuff is gone. And now we're ready to add our custom HTML and CSS code to our blog. So I pre-built the static site already from a front-end mentor challenge. You can get my source code, which I have linked below, along with a coupon code for Frontend Mentor Pro, which I highly recommend as a way to practice your front-end skills by building real-world projects. So here I have the index.html file from the static site. I'm going to copy the header tag from here and paste it in the header.php file to replace the old header tag there. 
I also have some assets in my static website like font files and images that I would like to use. So in my file explorer, I'm going to go to my static site files, copy the assets folder, and then paste it into my WordPress theme folder. So here's how our homepage looks at the moment. We have the HTML in, but we don't have any styles yet. So let's add our CSS styles next. So in our theme files, our styles are loaded from this style.css file. Now, since these are the styles from blank slate, I'm going to delete everything from it, then go to my static site project, copy the styles from there, and paste them into the coder blog theme styles. So now when we reload our website, we can see our styles are indeed loading. Now I'm also going to fix the image source for images that I just want to hard code and don't want to manage in WordPress like these social icons. Much better. Now the blog looks very close to what we want, except that all the content is hard coded in our HTML. So let's start setting up our homepage so that the content is managed in WordPress. I'm going to create custom fields in ACF for the title and the image. And then the paragraphs underneath will get loaded from the WordPress default page content. So actually, let's start with that. I'm going to copy the paragraphs and paste them into the homepage's WYSIWYG editor. Now, in our homepage.php file, I'm going to get the, the content code, which loads the page content from WordPress. And I'm going to replace the hard-coded paragraphs with this. And if I update the text for the homepage in WordPress, we can see that those changes are reflected on the actual website now. So this next part is going to be a little more tricky. We want to use advanced custom fields or ACF to load the title text and the image. Now, the reason that I love ACF so much is that WordPress was originally designed as a blogging tool. So for any page or post in WordPress, you really only have that WYSIWYG editor to edit your content. With ACF, you can create lots of different types of fields to put content in, which gives you a lot more control over the website. It also helps avoid mistakes if you have someone who's not really tech savvy adding content to the site through WordPress. So in our WordPress, I'm going to go to the ACF section and create a new field group to contain all of the custom fields that we want on the homepage. Then in the group, you can select the field type for each field. This first one is going to be a text field, and I'm going to call it homepage title. ACF will automatically create a field name for this, which we'll use in our code. Then let's create a new field and make this an image. So let's select the right type of image and call it homepage image. And we're going to use all the default settings for this image. Next, we need to make sure that these fields will show up only for that custom homepage page that we created. So now we can save our changes and we have our fields ready for the homepage. Next, we need to add the code to load each field into our actual PHP file. ACF has really good documentation and for each field type, they have example code that you can use in your own projects. So I'm going to copy the code snippet for this and then go into our homepage PHP file and paste it in inside the H1 tag. And then inside the get field function, I'm going to add the field name that was generated when we created it. So now if we edit the homepage in WordPress, we can see our custom homepage title field and add in the content for it. So then when we save and reload our website, we have our new title loading correctly. Let's also add our homepage image to the page. I'll upload an image to our WordPress media library from my computer. Then I can add in some alt text, save it, and then update the page. And like the title field, we can get the image code snippet that we need from the ACF website, copy it, and then paste it into our PHP file, making sure to have it load the correct field name for the homepage image and also having the profile CSS class. And for better SEO, we also want to load the width and height attributes of the image. This will tell the browser the height of the image so that it'll leave enough vertical space while the image is loading to prevent content shifts. And when we reload our website, we now have the image that we added in WordPress. The next section that we need to work on is the latest articles. This is going to display the most recent five posts from WordPress. Now I've already created the post content in WordPress that we want to load on our website. Now let's work on loading those posts in our code. 
In our homepage PHP file, we have all the articles hard-coded in individual article tags. So I'm going to leave just the first one and delete all the others. Then we can get the code to load the posts from the ACF docs site again, paste it in, and adjust our filters to only load the last five posts and remove some of that unneeded code. Now when we reload our website, we're loading the last five posts from WordPress. In our code, inside the for each loop is where we want to load each individual post. So I'm going to move the article tag inside the loop and then replace that hard-coded content with the post data to dynamically display the link, title, and post date for each post. So now when we reload our website, it's going to display each post using our HTML markup from the loop. I also need to make the view all articles page to list all blog posts. So just like we did in our custom home page, I'm going to make a new page in WordPress and call it articles so that the permalink slug will be articles. Then I'll rename the title to my articles and copy and paste the paragraph from the static website. So now in our code, I'm going to copy and paste the homepage PHP file, then rename the new one to articles and inside it, remove most of the code that we don't really need. Next, I'm going to copy the HTML from the static site and add it to our articles page and integrate it in with our PHP code. We're going to replace the paragraph with the excerpt for each post and update the title field to load the post title. And we want to load all the posts that are available on this page. So now we have all the posts loading on our articles page. If we click on a title, we're going to go to the individual post, which still needs some work. So we're going to be updating those next. So each blog post is going to get loaded from the single.php file. So first, let's go in here, remove any unneeded code per usual. Then we're going to copy the HTML that we want to add from the static site, paste it into our PHP file, and make sure we have all the correct closing tags. We'll replace the hard-coded blog post image, title, date, and content with everything from WordPress. So now when we go to load an individual blog post, we have the full post displaying for each of the links that are in the articles page. All right, so we've basically finished building our local site. Now, while we have the local site up and running, most likely you're going to want to put your blog up on the internet. So in order to do this, you're going to need a web host that supports PHP and WordPress. There are a lot of hosts out there and some of them are pretty dirt cheap, but I found that the ones that are the cheapest tend to cut corners. I've used multiple web hosts over the years, but the one that I really like and have used to host my own website for the past seven years and counting is SiteGround, the sponsor of this video. They are a little more premium than some of the other hosts that you might see around, but they're a really great host and they have excellent customer support where you can get in touch with a human. With SiteGround, my website is fast, doesn't go down randomly and isn't overrun with bot traffic. And they save backups of your server every single day. So that if something goes wrong with some code you pushed or a plugin accidentally breaks your site, you can quickly restore a previous backup with one click from their custom built site tools dashboard. The biggest reason I like SiteGround though, is that they handle all the updates and server maintenance for me. I used to hate having to remember to update WordPress core and my plugins, or even worse, having to update my version of PHP, which can be extremely nerve wracking to do yourself. Thankfully, SiteGround does all of this for me, so I don't have to worry about updating everything myself and can focus on other higher priorities. Like I said, SiteGround isn't the cheapest host out there, but to me, the peace of mind is really worth it. And if you sign up with a hosting plan with them, you'll automatically get over 80% off the first year, which gives you plenty of time to try out all the features that they have. For example, if you're interested in doing freelance web development, SiteGround makes it really easy to handle multiple client websites all from the same dashboard. If you're interested in checking out SiteGround, I have them linked down in the description. All right, so let's migrate and deploy our WordPress website to production. To migrate from our local to our production WordPress site, we'll be using a free plugin called WP Vivid that we'll need to install on both local and production environments. First, I'll install it on my production WordPress site and activate it. Then in WP Vivid, I'll create a new key, which we'll use to link our production site to our local one. Now I'll go to my local site and install WP Vivid here too, and activate it. In the auto migration tab, I'll copy the key from the production site 
back to the local site, then click the Clone Then Transfer button. And it might take a while to finish. Now, if we go to the production site, in the WP Vivid Backup and Restore tab, you should see the Received Backup. Click to restore it, and the plugin is going to migrate everything from your local site up to the production one. This may take a while if you have a lot of WordPress files and content. Once it's done, you'll be prompted to log into your production WordPress again, and this time you'll need to use your local WordPress login info because the migration has overwritten everything that you originally had on your production site. And here's our WordPress blog that is now on our production site. I really like the WP Vivid plugin because it migrates everything, WordPress files, posts, and pages, as well as image files. Building a WordPress website this way will make it very fast because we didn't add extra bloat with page builders and tons of plugins. This is one reason why I love using the classic theme with advanced custom fields, because I get a lot of control over the site, but it is still editable if you need to hand off content changes to a client or a team member. Now, if you want to watch the full video where I build the custom WordPress theme step-by-step -step and explain how everything works, check out the companion video that I have on my second channel, Coder Coder Builds. So I hope you found this video helpful. Let me know in the comments if you want to see more WordPress content. And as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.